Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello. If you are returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate you. A lot has happened since the last time I've seen you. Got new glasses, because my old ones were an old prescription and they were driving me insane. But my new glasses finally came, so that's exciting. But more importantly, we have hit 50,000 subscribers, which is bonkers bananas to me. I started this channel <laughs> when I was just bored in quarantine and it kind of just became its own thing and that will never not be weird to me. I just wanna give a big thank you and shout out to you guys and I am just so happy to have all of you here and to see how this keeps growing because it's been so fun to watch thus far. And yeah, without too much hullabaloo, uh, I am going to be talking about, and I'm kind of revisiting a creator that I've talked about previously on my channel, Glitter and Lasers or Anna O'Brien. I'm probably just gonna be calling her Anna in this uh, video for the sake of my sanity and not having to say Glitter and Lasers over and over and over again. I wanted to revisit Anna for a little bit because she has been on a health journey, which is what she calls it, but really I think it is like a weight loss journey, but part of me still kind of thinks that she's a little bit too afraid to call it that, given her audience, which I can kind of understand, to be honest. I've been following, like I said, I've been following her journey for a little bit, and or actually pretty much ever since it started over the course of the last year, and um, I think it started off as genuine, and I do still think that parts of it are still genuine, um, but I do think that it has kind of slowly but surely turned into an infomercial across multiple videos and Instagram posts for various different companies. Before we get into the rest of my thoughts on it, I do want to throw out a small caveat that I do not think there's anything wrong with monetizing your content as a content creator um, because this video is kindly sponsored by Atlas VPN. <laughs> Developed by the top cybersecurity specialists and IT engineers in 2019, Atlas VPN was created to make the internet more accessible for everyone. Currently, they have more than 6 million users worldwide. Atlas VPN is the best VPN deal on the market with their online protection costing just $1.83 per month plus three months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. Atlas VPN helps to stop ads and malware by blocking malicious links, ads and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. It will also help you get the best deals while shopping online, including your online subscriptions, think Netflix, Spotify, etc., etc., airlines, hotels, and more. Atlas VPN will also keep your Google search as private and will give you protection for unlimited devices. And of course, Atlas VPN will also help you unlock your favorite content from all over the world on various streaming services, which is my personal favorite feature. Atlas VPN is currently running a big deal because now, because now Atlas VPN Premium is currently just, like I said, $1.83 a month and you get three months extra. This also comes with a 30 day money back guarantee, like I stated before. And so protect your privacy and get the many benefits of Atlas VPN for this ridiculously low price. You can take advantage of this deal by clicking the link in, my, in the description box below and be sure to act quick because it is a limited time offer. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video and as always, thank you guys so much for continuing to interact with my content and make it so that brands like Atlas VPN want to work with me. And now let's just get back into the video. Now, like I just said, and I just demonstrated, <laughs> I I have no issues with creators monetizing their content. I think content creation can be a very time consuming job and people who choose to do it and want to monetize it should. But I think what's coming off weird to me about Anna is her timeline of doing so and how she's doing so. So if you don't know, Glitter and Lasers or Anna is and has been a very prominent figure in the plus size fashion body positivity space on the internet for a very long time. I actually think she was one of the first ones um, and she's one of the first ones that I remember ever following in my what I thought was general body positivity but wound up being fat acceptance days back when I was like 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, she also does a lot of plus size travel videos. I think this, if I'm not mistaken, I did kind of break up with her as a creator for a while when I was losing weight, but I do think this is a newer addition to her channel like in the last couple years or so, um, but she has been, she has shifted the focus a lot to plus size travel videos. Anna has a playlist on her channel called My Health Journey and I figured that was a good of a place as any to start to make this timeline for 
you all. And the first video on it is main is from three years ago, and it's mainly her talking about, I believe, her lymphedema diagnosis. But I honestly don't recall many of the videos calling as much attention uh, to her health journey as the one she posted last year called My Reality Check. And this one was actually the video that I did my first ever reaction to, because it was where she talked about how she was really having a reality check with her size and her limitations and basically it was like her click moment for that she needed to get healthy and take things more seriously than she had in the past. And it was just something I really empathized with because it was something that I went through on my own five years ago and what ultimately like led me to getting weight loss surgery five years ago. She's definitely been more active over the last year and up until now on this playlist than she was when it started. And I want to make it still like abundantly clear that like I am in full support of Anna doing whatever it takes to make her feel better and to get her health under control. I just think the way she's been talking about it on social media has begun to seem more and more disingenuous as time has gone on and I wanted to talk about that today. So like I said, in my opinion, I, I think that Anna is almost over monetizing her health slash weight loss journey. And like, why is that? I mean, obviously money. <laughs> but I think it is really interesting because she does come off as such a kind and genuine person and I think has taken quite a bit of care when it comes to how she talks about her weight loss and everything. Um, and I'm assuming that's because she knows her audience and the crossover between her content and fat acceptance content and how it might be a little jarring to some of her viewers. But if that is the case, I think the fact that she really only talks about uh, her weight loss and health journey and YouTube ch on her YouTube channel via sponsored videos videos will turn people off no matter what. And I'm saying that because it has started to turn me off a lot. So I figured the best way to present this to you all was via a timeline <laughs> because I think that is very important. Um, so starting in April of this year, Anna appeared on a podcast um, on a YouTube channel called It's Bigger Than Me. Nicole Brown and guests are all paid spokespersons for Novo Nordisk Inc. And I'm just thrilled to welcome the ray of sunshine that is Anna O'Brien to our show. And talking about the journey of living with obesity and the cycle of feeling like a failure because of it. This is important to remember because It's Bigger Than Me is a channel that is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. Nordisk. I can never say that. It's a channel that's sponsored by Novo Nordisk, which is the big pharmaceutical company behind weight loss medicines like Ozempic and Wagovi. This channel, for context, has 1.5 thousand subscribers, so 1,500 subscribers roughly, um, as of the day I'm filming this, which was September 17th. And for context, also, Anna's Instagram has 1 million followers. Her YouTube channel has almost double that at 1.85 million subscribers. And also, which I did not realize this <laughs> until looking into this, uh, her TikTok has almost 8 million followers. And so cumulatively, Anna's platform is made up of over 11 million people, which I know there's probably some, if not a lot of crossover there, but like that is insane, 11 million people. <laughs> I also wanted to note that in order to find this video, which honestly I would not have known about if my girly Sam at every size had not been covering Anna's uh, monetization of her health journey and her weight loss journey so closely and talked about this interview in one of her videos. Um, I had to search Anna's real name, Anna O'Brien, and Novo Nordisk together. Uh, when I search Glitter and Lasers, which is Anna's arguably most uh, well-known brand, along with Novo Nordisk or Ozempic or Wigovi, etc., etc., uh, this video did not come up. Glitter and Lasers is also nowhere to be found in the It's Bigger Than Me uh, description box or in the tags from what I could find. My full-time job is in social media. Like my job outside of YouTube is in social media. And while I don't do any of the blog writing that my team does, I still have learned like my fair share about keywords and SEO and all of that kind of stuff during my time in this job and previous jobs, to be honest, because I've always kind of worked in social media. And I, am of the belief based on my own experience in corporate social media that this was named, tagged, etc. very purposefully and that 
and that belief is only made stronger by what has transpired on Anna's social media platform since this initial video was um, posted on the It's Bigger Than Me channel. So put a pin in this because we will be touching on it later, but remember it was posted in April of this year. Next, uh, Anna posted quite a few videos over the course of the year, but the one that I think, um, unless I missed something, uh, kind of started the over-sponsoring and over-monetizing of her health journey was posted in May of 2023, which was called My Fitness Secret, How I Finally Got Consistent with My Workouts. Now this video is basically an entire infomercial for an app called Copilot, which is a service and an app that pairs you with a real fitness coach um, and helps you figure out workout routines and all that kind of stuff. So y'all know I went on a health journey. Um, duh. <laughs> if you missed it on my channel, I don't know how. And one of the things that's been really important about, you know, this phase of my health journey is rebuilding my strength, my endurance, and my mobility. And I knew taking this challenge on that I couldn't really do it alone. In fact, everybody around me who's been supporting me in the other parts of my health journey were like, you can't do this alone. I needed a trainer. But I had had a terrible experience with a trainer in the past where he basically told me that I was lazy because I couldn't adjust my schedule to fit the like very un like awkward times he had available and therefore I was going to be a failure. And it made me feel like crap. So I was not looking for that experience again, to be really honest, and I was a little shy about it. Well, then I heard about Copilot and I was like, okay, this might work for me. So Which I actually find Copilot as a concept like very interesting. <laughs> um, and so I don't mind like the sponsorship at all. But what I really thought was uh, interesting was Anna's framing of Copilot as her quote, fitness secret and how she quote, finally got consistent with her workouts. I think Anna is very aware of her audience because in the description box uh, of this video, she states that, quote, as a plus size woman, getting started working out can be scary. And I just wanted to showcase this video on her playlist in this video that I'm making right now, because to me, I really think she's sinking to the level of like cliche fitness advertising and like, dare I say, diet culture, right? by marketing Copilot to her audience this way as her fitness secret, yada, 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 and essentially playing along with her audience's insecurities. That's how it came off to me anyway. I also think this video is very odd um, because if she really wanted to help her audience instead of just herself, uh, she would have made a genuine video showing things that actually helped her outside of Copilot. Something like Copilot could be an excellent tool to help plus size people start in their fitness journeys. I do not doubt that for a second. Enlisting essentially a personal trainer is only a very small and arguably unnecessary if you can't afford it part of the picture and in all fairness she did post a video after this one that was literally just about her workouts and like what she was doing but i honestly have yet to see her give any actual tips for plus size people entering the gym and getting into fitness for the first time basically just been like mo her mostly shilling th things to what i think may be her pretty vulnerable audience and I say this having been part of her audience for a very long time and having been very vulnerable when it came to the topic of health and diet and exercise and all of that at the time. And it's obvious, and Anna emphasizes this as well, that she is not a trainer or a health professional or any of those things. And so I would not expect her to give any kind of like actual training or health advice, right? But I still do think, and I've made videos on these things myself in the past, I still do think that there are things to be said about just like social tips or lifestyle tips that one could give to someone who is or even isn't plus size, but still wants to start working out in a gym for the first time um, or wants to lose weight or whatever. I think it's a huge missed opportunity for her to be completely honest and also makes her quote, like wanting to share her journey with us come off really disingenuous when like all the videos are literally an infomercial. Like it's not just like an integration. It's like this whole video was for this app which I've done videos like that in the past too. I'm not discounting that kind of video. I just think it's get I think I just think it gets hinky when you're talking about health and that's kind of where my issue is lying here. <laughs> so, the next two videos are kind of where I started to get mad <laughs> when I was researching this with her heavily monetizing her health journey because in the next two videos I'm about to talk about, she starts talking about her mental health. 
And normally I'm all for creators being honest and open about their mental health because I think it does nothing but help people and make people feel less alone. But in this instance, in July and August of this year, Anna posted videos that were again, very long infomercials for better help. These videos were titled, this image changed my life, mental health story time, and when everything goes wrong, travel story time. Now, before anyone comes for me about my past with like shady sponsors, do not worry, a video addressing that is coming and it's getting filmed literally right after I'm done with this one. So don't worry, that's happening. Um, but spoiler alert, I am sorry and I am taking accountability for my past decisions. Anyways, the first video is Anna talking about her experience with the first time that uh, she went viral on Instagram and it was a photo of her in a bikini and how the brand who posted it didn't uh, and didn't lend her any advice or support, but you know who did? And you know who helped her in the next one too? Better help, sure did. Now it's like not hard at all to do one Google search or one YouTube search and to find out why better help is arguably not the best place to go for mental health treatment. First and foremost, like not all the people on there claiming to be the mental health professionals are. They've also been uh, called out for giving like questionable at best and insulting at worst uh, advice to their clients. The company has also been threatened by the FTC to be banned because of their selling of clients' personal information and data. Keep in mind, this is a therapy website, a place where people go to get mental health help, and they've been accused and I think proven, allegedly, hypothetically, uh, of selling their users' data. And this honestly could be a whole video on its own, better help and all of that. And I will, but I will link a few videos down below by a couple creators that I love who have made very good deep dives uh, exploring different sides of why better help is like not ideal. Uh, one of which is from Isabella Lanter, who is like one of my favorite anti MLM, anti scam queens. And then three videos from another another creator called Mickey Adkins, who she is a licensed therapist and she has talked about very openly about how BetterHelp is affecting the mental health treatment industry, I guess, for lack of a better term, and also how why she refuses to partner with them on her channel. <laughs> Like I said, this topic is one that I could go on a much deeper dive about because it really, really grinds my gears. And uh, so let me know if that's something you'd want down in the comments um, because I'd definitely be interested in doing that. That all being said, I am not really one to criticize what someone does for the treatment of their mental health in their own personal lives, so long as it's not hurting themselves or other people. But I'm having a really hard time giving Anna the benefit of the doubt with this one because having been on the internet for as long as Anna has, there is no way she did not know the hot water that BetterHelp has been in in the past. So to me, Anna publicly promoting BetterHelp as part of her own as part of her own health journey on her channel to almost two million subscribers is incredibly dangerous and irresponsible. I'm gonna touch on this in the video that I'm gonna make where I talk about my own mistakes in the past with blindly accepting sponsors and whatnot. But I think one of the biggest and honestly like most confusing and hardest things I've had to learn over my time of being a person on the internet is that there's a huge difference between using something or buying something from somewhere or whatever as just like a normal, regular, regular, regular person and being a person on the internet who's getting paid to promote these things to their audience. Anna's framing of both of both of these videos where better help is mentioned is it's it's rooted in vulnerability and I and how she's sharing things she's never shared before. Then sneaking a better help sponsorship in there. It, it all just seems very scummy to me when the history of better help is plastered all over the internet. It, it, very, it seems like she's taking advantage of her audience and her platform. And if there's one thing that I cannot stand that creators, when creators do, it's when they create a false sense of vulnerab vulnerability using their mental health as a way to ultimately sell their audience something. And that's what it felt like Anna was doing in these videos. And it was honestly like extremely disappointing to find these. Okay, so next, now back on, now let's go back to the Novo Nordisk stuff stuff and all of that. So recently, just on September 6th, the day before my birthday, Anna posted a video titled, My Biggest Health Update Yet. And in this video, she gets pretty emotional and
and like talks about how she and she talks about how she attended an event put on by Novo Nordisk called It's Bigger Than Me. Remember that? About nine months ago. So if my math is correct, she went in about like January of this year. And for reference, the first evidence of her working with Novo Nordisk was put on the internet in April. And she talked about how this event really helped her look at her obesity and how to go about treating it. And after going to it, she started working with a GP to help start her journey. She talks about how she owes a lot to that doctor in helping save her life. And she gets very emotional about it, which honestly I could understand. I feel the same way about like my doctors and my, my surgeons that I worked with in, in the bariatric clinic. Like those people saved my life. Like they helped save my life. And um, I have gotten emotional talking about that in the past. So I can totally understand where she's coming from with that. She also talks about how she's been traveling and how it's hitting her uh, that all of her treatment um, for her various medical conditions is really helping her function and to do things that she's always wanted to do and basically helping her to get her life back, which is an amazing feeling. I remember feeling that way too. But this video is basically an entire promotional video for It's Better Than Me's new program that allows doctors to essentially like kind of register or say that they're, that they're allies in treating obesity in a non-judgmental, compassionate, uh, and inclusive way. And again, It's Bigger Than Me is directly tied to Novo Nordisk, the pharma company who is behind weight loss medications like Ozempic and Wigovi. I obviously do not have anything against seeking medical tools to help with weight loss. I had weight loss surgery five years ago and have been on Phentermine for the last few months to help me get back on track after falling off the wagon for a bit. It's also helped me treat my OCD, so that was also an added bonus. I am very much a you do you boo boo kind of person when it comes to whatever kinds of tools you need to seek out to help you lose weight. Again, so long as it's not hurting you or other people. Where I do take issue particularly with Anna, is the way in which she is only talking about her weight loss and her progress through monetized videos. But in this video that is like so clearly an advertisement for It's Better Than Me and Novo Nordisk, um, Anna does not outwardly say that it is that until 14 minutes and 43 seconds into a 16 minute and 32 second long video. That you can love yourself through this change and you can still enjoy life through change, but that doesn't happen unless you find the right provider and you find the right healthcare team to help you do it. And I chose to do this video today because I really passionately believe that. And I know some of you will look at this and go, oh, it's a sponsored video and it is sponsored. I'm not gonna lie to you about that, but I did this video because I fervently believe that this is what we need. Like in my humble opinion, and no, I do not have the numbers that Anna does, nor do I want the numbers that Anna does because having over 11 million people looking at me on the internet would like send me into a spiral of anxiety that I do not need. I really think that that should have been the first thing out of her mouth in that video especially when it came to talking about something as vulnerable as this. This video really rubbed me the wrong way because as far as I know, this is also the first time that Anna has ever mentioned Novo Nordisk or weight loss medication on her YouTube channel with 2 million subscribers. If she had mentioned it before then, the video is not included in the My Health Journey playlist, which also seems very odd to me if that is the case. Like if she mentioned it in another video and like didn't add it to that playlist. She did, however, post on being, post about being on weight loss medications on Instagram in July. Hi, hi, hello, this is Editing Megan here. Um, I did wanna like read this post just for context because it also helps the timeline a little bit. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do this in the video, but uh, the post says, let's spill some tea. I'm taking prescription medication to help manage my weight. I originally was going to write this big post explaining why it works for me, but you know what? I don't care. If taking medication to help me feel physically better is a problem, feel free to unfollow me. I also take medication for Hashimoto's, anemia, vitamin deficiencies, fibroids, and anxiety in case treating those also enrages you. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Health is complicated. There isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. I waited nine months before starting this medication. I didn't do it lightly and investigated all, all my options before making the decision. Furthermore, it's not a magical solution, but part of a larger managed plan, which includes massive changes to my long-term diet, 
regular weight training, therapy, and movement for enjoyment. I wasn't trying to keep it a secret, I just didn't want anyone else's opinions on it until I made up my own. Heck, I've only been on it for three months, for about three months, and it's still a new part of my story. Also, let me be very clear, I won't recommend it to other people because I am not a doctor, just like I don't give diet advice because I'm not a dietitian, and I don't give workout advice because I'm not a personal trainer. In short, your health should be you and your doctor's business. So if this was posted in July and she was only on it for three months at the time, that means she started it in April. Yeah, roughly, which is when that podcast went up on the Novo Nordisk uh, it's bigger than me channel. I still think that she was kind of lying by omission here in a lot of her content. Um, and that I get wanting to keep things to yourself. I'm going to talk about this in the video later, but I get wanting to keep things to yourself. But I think the second you sign a contract with a big pharma company and then start taking, which like big pharma, like I don't have issues with medication. I'm on medication, <laughs> but like I think uh, the second as an influencer, you start promoting a pharma company, um, that's when you need to be honest. Um, it sucks, but I feel like that's just kind of the nature of the beast. But yeah, this helped the timeline a little bit. So I wanted to read it out loud for you. Also, like I mentioned later in the video as well, she has never, at least to my knowledge, confirmed that she's on Ozempic or Wigovi, but like with how much she works with Novo Nordisk like I feel like it's a logical thing to jump to um and so yeah it, even if she's not on either of those and she's still working with Novo Nordisk I, I just feel like and because she's made health and fitness like such a part of her brand like I I really think that she owed her audience an explanation um like when she started this because because for a while, and I talk about it on her TikTok, she has not talked about this at all. Um, and she makes it seem like she's just exercising and whatever. I'm going to talk about it later. But, like, even if she's not working, even if she's not taking, like, Ozempic or Wagovi or anything, I really just think it's, like, the principle of the thing that rubbed me the wrong way. Anyways, okay, bye. <laughs> and again, her Instagram has a following of one million people. And her YouTube has a following of 1.85 million people, so almost double. And her TikTok also, again, over 8 million followers on TikTok. But if I was to assume that after the event in January, she then went to a doctor and started a weight loss medication afterwards, there was no mention of it on any of her social medias until July. She also, and I scrolled through all of them, has never mentioned it on TikTok, her biggest platform. And she's been posting, but she's been posting things like her working out, her progress. Hi, I'm back. And so I just wanted to like run through some of the TikToks that she's been posting. This one is one that like I really wanted to talk about uh, without just like putting text up on screen because it's a TikTok. She posted it in July. So as we can deduce from her Instagram post about being on weight loss medication, she had been on weight loss medication for three months at this time, okay? Where she's saying, She's losing weight fast. I bet she had surgery. And in her caption, she does go on to say that she doesn't have anything against people who have weight loss surgery. That's not where I take issue with this. I don't really care about that. What I do take issue with is that she says in like retaliation to that comment, like that hypothetical comment that she's been getting apparently, is that she's been working out and all that kind of stuff. No mention of weight loss or, or no medication, no mention of weight loss medication. None of that, which I think is extremely irresponsible like when you have a platform the size of hers and it kind of goes back to when like Alexandra Rodriguez had um the plastic surgery I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now to like remove her hanging belly basically and was like playing it off as like weight watchers and diet and exercise for like the longest time I think that's a super dangerous thing to be not talking about uh, on your platforms of vulnerable people who may also be struggling with their weight and looking for something to do. Still, like leaving out the fact that you are taking prescription medication to help aid your weight loss is so icky to me. Um, but basically, like all of her other TikToks have been like this about her just like going to the gym and eating better and like forming better habits and stuff, which, like, yes, those are a big part of any health, weight loss, journey, whatever. 
But like, so is the fact that you're taking medication. <laughs> That's something that you can't just leave out. Um, especially when your TikTok has a following of 8 million people. Um, yeah, I want to also say like, I didn't talk about being on Fentermine for a few months, but there's a big difference because I'm not being paid by a pharma company to promote their initiatives. Um, yep. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, I just wanted to like talk about this one because it really, really got me going. Anyways. Okay. Bye again. <laughs> Oh, also, just rereading this caption, and she says that it's funny to me that some people still try to tell me nothing is changing while other hypothesize I had surgery. To be very clear, there is nothing wrong with surgery. It's just not my story. Okay, whatever. I've been pretty open about my journey. This weight loss is the result of treating several previous untreated medical conditions, learning how to eat to help my manage my pain from lipedema, and a whole lot of sweat equity. No mention of, oh, I'm also taking weight loss medication. Oh, I've also been taking weight loss medication for the last three months. I'm sorry, like, this shit pisses me off. It makes me really mad, and it's honestly kind of disappointing. Actually, it's very disappointing. Um, but yeah, I wanted to just make sure I, 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 I highlighted that part of the caption to this particular TikTok. Which, like, yes, get it. Be proud. Show that stuff. That's exciting. But also be honest to your audience of 8 million people just on that one platform, please. <laughs> My thoughts on this whole thing are I totally, 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 totally get keeping some things to yourself, especially when it comes to your health and what you are doing for your own health when you are a person on the internet. Because let's face it, People can be dickheads. That's why I didn't talk about being on Fentermine for really for like a few months, and um, because I just didn't want opinions. <laughs> but there does come a time when you owe it to the people who genuinely care about you and follow you. Be honest with them. And I feel like in the context of Anna, that time would have been the second she signed the contract or the brand agreements or whatever with the pharmaceutical company, and as someone who has a much smaller audience than Anna, but has used medical tools as an aid in weight loss even before I had my channel, I'm always doing the most to make sure I'm being like abundantly clear and honest about how I went, how I went about my initial weight loss um, and how my health journey now and my weight loss journey now could look different than someone's who, who has never had surgery or who has never taken a weight loss medication ever. And that's not to like, pat myself on the back it's just like I need people to know that like I did not go about this like a very typical way you know and because in the world of like toxic fitness and diet advice like I think it's crucial for the safety of your audience and your integrity as a creator and I don't know if I'm just missing like a big piece of the puzzle here that would make this entire video like null and void but I went pretty far back in Anna's content and like all of her and all of her major platforms and what I found is what I talked about here. And it seems like her audience like isn't questioning any of it, which also scares me a little bit. And it also kind of leads me to believe that Anna's filtering her comments, but I digress. I'm honestly like really happy that Anna has found something that is working for her and is helping her get her life back and that she's having success with it because that's like all I ever wish for somebody who embarks on something like this. But going into this video, I was expecting it to be like lightly critical because I've always liked Anna and I've always had a soft spot for her. But as I'm like, as I was finishing this script, I was left feeling really, really disappointed. And I feel like if it's not on purpose, Anna's very much lying by omission by not talking about about her partnership with Novo Nordisk uh, more and talking about how she's not just using diet and exercise to lose weight and get healthier. Because with her size of an audience that she has built her brand around, I feel like that is a crucial piece of information to leave out. Anyways, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, this was like honestly kind of a disappointing video to research because I didn't realize that it was like, this hidden that she was taking weight loss medication um, because she said it herself. <laughs> Granted, I will say she has never said she has, she is, and as far as I know, I think I saw somewhere that she may have said it on an Instagram story, which like, if that's the case, those disappear in 24 hours. So that's not really cool either. Um, but she has never said that she is taking Ozempic or Wegovy, but like with the amount 
of talking that she does about Novo Nordisk, I have to assume that she's taking one of those because like, what else? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Let me know if I missed anything or because right now the disingenuousness of it all <laughs> is really making me feel kind of sad and disappointed. Thank you to Atlas VPN again for sponsoring this video, going back into my monetization, uh, and be sure to go check out the big deal down below because like I said, Atlas VPN Premium is currently $1.83 a month and you'll get three months extra. This video, this uh, deal also comes with a 30 day money back guarantee, which is awesome. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm back. I am going to try my damnedest to get on a filming schedule again now that my life is like settled uh, and I'm not concussed anymore. Well, I mean, I am concussed, but like I'm feeling a lot better. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, drink your water, take your meds, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.